Hey, hey, hey. Good afternoon. Good evening. It's about it's 6 p.m. So I guess we say good evening, even though the sun is still bright and shining. Um, but thank you for uh, tuning in or watching the replay. I know I've been kind of MIA with some lives. Um, so I think um, before I get started, but let me just introduce myself. I'm Chara Harris, and thank you for being on Marvelously Natural. Oh, hey, Chara. The other Chara. That's so awesome. I had a friend. We have the same name. It's pretty cool. Um, so thank you for being on my page, Marvelously Natural, where it's not all about hair, but all hair is good hair. Um, so I'm thinking, uh, hey, girl, I'm so glad you're here. Uh, make sure to comment, like, and share. And the school year is picking up. I work in education. So those of you that follow me, you know, I uh, work in education and I'm a middle school administrator and we're back at work. Kids aren't back yet till a whole month later next month, but we're back. Got to get ready for the teachers to come back, ready for kids. So my schedule is going to be a little crazy. So I think I'm going to start doing these once a month. Um, I really, really want to do once a week, but I also want to give good content and have time to really pray over it and think about it. So I'm actually coming over here and doing some good lives. Um, so I think I'm going to do once a month. I just got to decide what day because I want to do once a month because I already have some topics I still want to talk about, but I want to give myself time to actually really do them. So um, I, I would like to even do twice a month, like maybe every other week I'll try, but I know the beginning of the school year is probably going to be once a month. So um, before for the kids and everybody come back though, I'll try to do some more on here today. So not today, but before the kids come, some more before August and September hits. That's where it's going to get rough. All right. So thank you for joining and thank you everybody for watching the replay and remember to comment, like, and share and join my email club. I send out, um, tips on hair care because I'm all about natural hair, but I also send some motivation. I try to do a Monday motivation. I've been trying to um, send some devotions and things of how God is working in my life that will be encouraging for you. So thank y'all for tuning in on this Sunday. Hey, cuz. So happy to be on here. My cousin's on here. Um, but I love your videos too, Charity. They're very encouraging. So you keep on doing it, girl. All right, so this evening, um, I decided to come on and talk about three ways that I know I'm content in my singleness. Because sometimes we think we're content and then something happens and you're back in your emotions. And so then you're like, okay, I wasn't content, as content as I thought I was. Um, and so I feel like there's, these are three things um, that has really made me stop and reflect and say, you know what? I'm really content where I am. Like that didn't, that didn't really bother me. So I want to share, uh, cause I'm hoping that this may help you reflect, especially those of you that are single, or if you're not single, if you're married, but you got single friends, then share this video with them. Um, and it may help you to reflect as well. Your, your walk in your single time. So I'm going to be using my, my phone. Uh, usually I do, uh, Instagram live as well on my phone, but I got my notes on my phone today. So I won't be going on Instagram on here. Um, I may do it separate. Okay, so let me get my notes down here so I know. And I can pull up I'm a Bible person. So the first thing that I started to notice about myself um, was I'm an emotional person. Um, is when someone else was getting married or having a baby or even getting a promotion or something that I thought. I should be doing at a certain age or at a certain time in my life. When I got to where I could genuinely rejoice with them, that's when I knew that I was content where I was. I was happy. I'm happy in the season where God had me because I could literally be happy for someone else that's doing something that I want as well. And I'm being happy to the point where it's like, oh, I got tears because romance and weddings, you know, they make me all cry and stuff. And I've got tears in my eyes and everything, and I'm genuinely happy for them. And I say that was a clue for me knowing I was content is because beforehand, about probably about a year ago or maybe two years ago, um, I would get choked up, but I would still be choked up kind of like in a selfish way. Like it'd be kind of like, well, when is it going to happen for me? And I'm getting older. And it was kind of, I turned it, it turned into a woe is me moment. And I've noticed now that I view it as that is so wonderful. Look at God, how he put these two people together. And it's like, I know if he can do it for them, he can do it for me. And it's that's I've, and it's taken some work. I'm not going to sit here and say that this just happened overnight. Um, but I've noticed that that's my go-to, my attitude that I'm here right now. Um, 
yes, you can go to a baby shower and not be bitter. And you're just like, it's all good. I'm happy for them because you know, at some point, somehow God's going to make it happen for you, right? He is sovereign. So he can make it happen. However, um, and I will say at the end, some things that I think help It's all God, but kind of like what I, I don't want to say what I did, but I guess how I got closer to God and it helped me to be more content, if that makes sense. So kind of some steps to do that. So that was the first thing when I could genuinely be happy of people getting engaged and things like that. And one of the things that did help I'll say now is, you know, listening to good teaching and good encouragement. Um, and I did watch one video by, I think it was Jerry Flowers with Redefine TV that said, you're over here crying about somebody getting married or whatever. And you don't know if that person settled. You don't know if that relationship is ordained by God. You don't know if it's blessed and you're over here comparing, you know, and you don't even know what that was really all about. And you're comparing yourself to it, right? So we're comparing ourselves to people's highlight reels and not really what the work that went into it. Um, so I can totally do that now and I can go to baby showers. because I still, I love babies. And of course I still want to have a baby, but I can go to baby showers and go to weddings and generally be happy for that person and know that in due time, it will happen for me in a totally different way, right? Our stories are going to be different because no story is going to be the same. Um, yes, yes. You're welcome, cuz. And I know that's been hard for you. That's, I can't even imagine how, how you feel. So um, if this is just a little bit of encouragement, then that, see, oh my God, teared up. Then that, that makes me happy for you because I can't imagine what you've been through. Um, oh, see, I'm gonna get teared up because my cousin's in here. Uh, and I know what she's been through, at least a little bit of what she's been through. So that's the first step because I could generally be happy. And I am going to look up let me look up the verse that goes with it. So it's Romans 12, 15. You go, if you got your Bible or you got your phone, I'm using my phone this time. I usually bring my Bible in here, but I did today. Uh, so Romans 12, 15, it says, I'm using the, I'm reading out of the New Living Translation. It says, be happy with those who are happy and weep with those who are weep. Weep. And the uh, uh, New King James says, rejoice with those who rejoice. So when you can genuinely like rejoice with somebody else and not feel any kind of like, when is it gonna happen for me? Or I'm being, you know, getting jealous. You're, 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 you're in your contentment season, I feel like, or you're in your, you're getting there in that season. Um, and only God can change that heart and get you there. Absolutely. So um, the second, let me see, the second way that I know I'm content at least for me, it may sound silly to some of y'all, but at least for me, is that I'm okay with going to church by myself. I don't know why church was the one that bothered me the most. Like, I've gone to the movies by myself without, and I'm, I used to go to movies by myself and tear up because I'd see couples and I wasn't in there. Then I got over that. I was like, I'm going to go, I want to go see this movie. Nobody else wants to see it, so I'm going by myself. So I can go to movies by myself. I can go eat somewhere by myself because I'll pull out a book and read. Um, I'll go to a museum by myself and just that wasn't the problem, but something about going to church by myself. And I think it's because the church does put a lot of emphasis, emphasis on marriage and relationships. And that's totally fine, right? Because God ordained that back in Genesis. So I'm not knocking churches for doing that, but as a single person, sometimes you just, you see the couples come in and their kids and, and you're sitting there on the, on your row, you know, and there were times where I was in church and I was the only person on my row. And I go to a pretty large church here in Austin, um, Shoreline Church, and I really like it. And so it's pretty big. And so um, there's, you know, people everywhere. And you just think, you know, and I, one time I said that, I was like, how can it happen? And I'm sitting here, this whole service, and no one came to sit on the road where I was, you know. And then it got to the point where that didn't bother me. It really didn't bother me because I was so focused on worshiping and then wanting to hear the word and learn something and taking my notes that it didn't bother me that there wasn't anybody on my row um until sometimes if someone sits there now i'm just kind of like you're messing up my vibe like i'm here all by myself and now i got somebody over here so when he says turn it to your neighbor i gotta actually turn to my neighbor right and that's that introvert part so you get kind of used to it and then you're like well now someone's sitting here and i'm like you know you're messing it up like i, I used to not have to turn and say anything i'll just get my bible out and get ready to take notes so but that used it used to be something that bothered me and i noticed that that didn't bother me as much because i was just I was comfortable where, where I was, and it's such a good feeling. And it took some while to get here, y'all. So I'm not saying this like it happened overnight. Like it took me 
some steps to get where I am. Uh, but that one was a biggie for me. I don't know why it was church, but everywhere else I could go by myself. But church used to just really kind of bother me being by myself, but not anymore. Um, and so the, the verse that I have to go with that is Matthew 6, 33, where it says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and then all other things would be added to you. Let me, I, I probably paraphrased it, but let me go and read it for real. Um, is I think I had gotten to the point where I really just wanted to seek God. And once I put my focus there, then I wasn't thinking about who's sitting next to me, who's not sitting next to me, who's sitting in front, who's saying this. I really wasn't in that. Um, and that verse used to kind of, I used to kind of confuse me, like, how do I seek God more? Like, how do I, you know, and God will show you that. Like, it'll show you, he'll slowly work on your heart where you just feel like I'm here worshiping and it's okay. I'm here. I'm not, there's no one sitting next to me. That was one of my things. Um, so yeah, Matthew 6, 33, seek the kingdom of God above all else and live righteously and he will give you everything you need. So that's the New Living Translation. Um, I go between that one mainly and New King James a lot. So that's the verse that I feel like solidified that part of being able to sit in church and be the only person on my row and be totally okay with it um, to the point where now if someone sits there, I'm kind of like, you're messing it up. But anyway, so that's the second way. Um, the third way, to get back to my notes, the third way is I noticed that my mind had completely changed when, especially about romance and like romantic movies. Like I'm, I really am, I'm a hopeless romantic. I love romantic stories and the Hallmark stories and, and all that stuff. But I noticed that as I watched them, if there was something in there that was not, um, I guess I would say didn't line up with God's word. I didn't like it. Like I just watched a show on Netflix um, called Kingdom Fall. And it's a great show. And I'm still going to watch season two. This is about the, I like history type shows. And it takes place during the, the Crusades and the King of France. And, you know, it's all of that kind of stuff, right? So kind of like dark ages and there's swords and there's fighting and all this. And I loved it. And the part I didn't like was that the queen who was married to the King of France was having an affair with one of the Knights Templars. And I didn't like her character from day one. And I knew, I, I, I kind of checked myself. I was like, wow, I was like, that's not how I used to be. I used to be like, oh, they're in love and she doesn't love him. And so she's going after, after him and because that's the truth. They really love each other's true love. And I was, uh, I was taken aback because I was like, okay, it doesn't show her husband being mean or anything to her granted he was the king he was busy he had to make a lot of decisions but they didn't paint him that way and she's just all sneaking off climbing out windows and stuff to go have an affair with another man and i just from that the first time it happened i did not like her character i was like how disrespectful how humiliating to your husband because you know by the end of the season people started finding out what was you know that she was doing it and going on I was like that's so disrespectful and humiliating he's the king and that's what you do like it was just like i i had a total different mindset about it i still love the show because the story the storyline is good and i like the you know historical context to it but if it had been like a year ago, a couple of years ago, I'd have been all wrapped up in that romance, even though she was cheating. I'm like, oh, but they love each other. You know, I would have been so wrapped up in the romance. And now it's like, I just sat there and I was like, my mind has completely changed. Like, I'm not so wrapped up in the romance. I'm more wrapped up in, well, if they're married, they're in covenant. And I would have rather seen them together and work through their problems than her going off with, with some, somebody else. Right. And so I, it's so funny, like I watch TV shows now through that lens sometimes, like, oh, those people, no, 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 this is this is what they need to do or whatever. And so I can just tell that God has totally worked on my mind and worked on my heart because I used to be that romance girl that as long as they loved each other, you know, don't let anything, you know, come apart, come, come between them and, and all of that. Um, and so I kind of shocked myself when I was upset and not liking that character. And that's when I sat here and I was like, wow, I was like, I have really grown in, um, you know, in, in my heart, God has really changed my heart and I've grown in some of the things I've done. Cause I've, I've taken a course, um, for Christian singles. You probably heard me mention about TOU. It's called the one university. I've taken that course. I've done some other courses, one called Wor worthy of the weight for single women. And I, you know, you're taking these courses and you kind of wonder, is this stuff really sinking in? And it's like, it is like, I noticed that my mind had really changed about what is a healthy relationship and what, what would that love look like? Um, 
And so like I watched another movie called the, what was it? The Outlaw King. And I liked it so much. I mean, it was still, it's still history and I still liked it. But the love story I felt like was so much real, more real because it was an arranged marriage, but it showed how they grew to love each other. And, you know, she ended up being kidnapped and he had to go get her and all that stuff. So of course it had all that in there, but it showed how they grew to love each other. Like even in an arranged marriage, like by the end of the movie, they were a solid like couple. And I just felt like that was so much more beautiful than someone going out the window to go have an affair with somebody in, in my mind. So I may be a little strange now watching uh, TV shows, <laughs> but, uh, I just sat and I contemplated uh, after I did my last live and I feel like the Holy Spirit dropped this on my heart. And he's like, tell them how you know that you're content in your singleness. Like what, what are the things that have changed? And so those are the three major things that, um, that I feel that I saw in myself, just being self-reflective and seeing that those are the changes and I'm way more content in my season because I know it will happen in God's time in, in his way. I can't compare my story to someone else's story because um, that'll also get you in trouble. The comparison will definitely get you in trouble in timeline. And this is not to say that I have hiccups that I don't see something and it hits me, but it's like, I, I talk to God about it and I, and I, I pray about it more than just getting in that. How can I say it? Like, getting in that woe is me attitude for like a whole day, you know, it may last for like 30 minutes and then it's like, I'm done because I've talked to God about it. But that's the biggest change. The biggest thing that I did is I started telling God exactly how I felt. I don't know why sometimes we're afraid to go to him. I think we feel like we got to pray a certain way and pray certain words. And, and I got to where if I was feeling lonely one day, I would just say that. I'd be like, God, I feel really lonely today. Like, I don't know why, but just loneliness and I feel this. And usually, lo and behold, someone would call me, someone would text me, or I would turn the TV on and get engrossed in some, you know, documentary or something and forget all about the loneliness. Like he had a way of comforting me. And sometimes I would just feel better by just saying, God, I'm feeling really lonely today. And then it's like, it's like it went away. It's like I would, you know, I'd get up and I'd go to the store or do something, you know. And so I got to where I would just tell him everything. And that I feel like when I started doing that, at least in my mind, I'm trying to think back, is when um, I started seeing changes that you see here, like being okay, being at church by myself and, fil and filtering movies and romance through, you know, the lens of a healthy relationship and things like that. Um, so I hope this was helpful. I really, really do hope it was helpful to you. Um, I think, oh, for the third one, the renewed mind, I do have a scripture for that. So Romans 12, 2, that's a really popular one. And this scripture has helped me in so many areas because it's more than just, um, like your mind can be renewed in so many different areas of your life, right? Like I even talk about when I had to regrow my hair, I had to renew my mind about how I saw my hair and what I what I thought it should look like opposed to the way God made it. And that's, that's a whole nother life I can do, but I had to renew my mind. I had to see my hair and how I look the way God wanted me to see it. And so with me taking these um, courses and relationships and reading books, and then just talking to God about things and looking at relationships in the Bible and, and how people got married, which is a whole lot, not a lot of dating going on in the Bible, but um, and just learning from that and just different ways the Holy Spirit has pointed out things to me and showed me, it totally renewed my mind on what a healthy relationship is and what beautiful, really, romance is. And it's not what Hollywood wants you to think it is. It's not what I used to think it is. Um, so Romans 12, 2. Um, I'm going to do New King James Version because that's, that's the one I like the best. All right, so Romans 12, 2, New King James says, and do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is good and acceptable and perfect will of God. And that can be applied to like every area of your life, every area of your life, like even in your finances. You wanna get out, debt, get out of debt, you're gonna have to do some mind work and change your mindset about money so that you can get out of debt, right? Or anything. So it's one of my favorite verses. And when, you, when I first read that verse and was learning the, and still learning the Bible. And, but earlier on, I used to always think it was just, it was just strictly biblical and strictly spiritual, but it's like, it's applied to other parts of your life as well. And I totally see it in, um, 
in, in my singleness and things that have helped me be content in my singleness. So I hope that was helpful. I hope I didn't ramble too much. I do like to tell stories. So sometimes I can kind of ramble off um, a little bit too much. And I always forget to turn off my notifications. So something always pops up while I'm on here. Um, but I hope this was helpful. If you enjoyed it, thank you for watching. Please leave a comment, uh, sign up for my email club, and most definitely um, like and share if you have any single friends. And um, hopefully this was really practical too. I like to be very practical of like, this is stuff that I actually did and what and how it helped me and then share that so we can help you be encouraged, be inspired, and to re reflect um, in your season of singleness as well. So hopefully it was helpful. Definitely like, comment, and share. I enjoyed uh, being here with you guys. Thank you for tuning in. Um, and all of your comments, I had to go back and read them. If there's more on here as well. All right. So I don't know if I'll be on next week. I, I have some topics, but I like to really get ready and have notes and have my verses and stuff ready and, and for you guys. So um, I don't know if I'll be on next week. I'll try to do a post to give you like a heads up if I'm coming on. Or if not, I'll just come on. But it usually be in the evenings, number one, because the lighting is good in this room. <laughs> and then um, uh, just because I work during the day and then I have other stuff to do in the weekend. So I'll probably come in in the evenings most of the time. But uh, I'll try to do another one. Um, maybe this month before school hits, but I know once August hits and school hits, it'll probably be once a month. And so uh, I'll be, I'll be going live and maybe I can, I might be able to be on a little longer because I can have more, more content and stuff for y'all guys. But I hope you're enjoying these lives. I'm definitely enjoying sharing my walk with God and what the Holy Spirit is teaching me and what I'm learning. I'm really enjoying sharing it and I hope it encourages, inspires and um, helps someone else. And that's the main reason why I am sharing. So thank you for watching. Thank you for watching the replay. Like, comment, share, join my email club, and I will see you guys the next time. So bye, y'all.